Last Friday, to the shock of many, Abdul Razak Beginder was acquitted and discharged, pending an appeal by the prosecution. The two bodyguards now face trial. Really, um, there's no shred of evidence at all been presented. Nothing in court, nothing, nothing has been said. And in fact, our, our honorary, the, the Mongolian Honorary Council has come out openly to say, look, he examined all the documents and there was nothing to connect me with, with, with the Mongolian girl whatsoever. So you didn't know her? No, she, she did some not. translation work for nothing, the Nothing, absolutely nothing. I have not met her at all. I do not know her at all. And how can I be linked with her? But the plot thickens. Making the running on this sensational story has been Raja Petra Kamarudin. His popular Malaysia Today internet news site gets millions of hits a day. We can't talk to him. He's been arrested and jailed under the Internal Security Act. So we talk to his wife about what he's written on the Deputy Prime Minister. He's even published letters that Najib has written, uh, signed uh, notes Najib to the departments is concerned. You know, things like that. He's, he's done that. So he's definitely a threat. <laughs> When not in solitary confinement, Raja Petra is in court on sedition and criminal defamation charges over his allegations that Najib and his wife Rosmar were implicated in the murder of Sharabu. Further, in a High Court statutory declaration, Raja Petra alleges Rosmar was present when the body of Sharabu was blown up. But the man who would be Prime Minister and his wife deny the allegations and they won't sue. I can sue him, but that's exactly what he wants. You know, if you sue somebody like him and, and, and you know, and you have to go to court and uh, they can exploit the situation. Uh, and, and, and I don't think it's a very um, a savory sort of experience to be in court especially if you're occupying a high position in government. Instead, Najib Razak, the man destined for the highest political office in Malaysia, has sworn his innocence at the mosque. Atas nama Allah, wallahi wa billahi wa tawlahi, bahawa saya tidak terlibat dan saya tidak mengenali perempuan Mongolia yang dituduh you can't just dismiss it by swearing on the Quran or saying that I don't know this girl. Uh, because the way the whole um, court proceedings took place, the judge being removed, the prosecution uh, not willing to get Najib to answer uh, questions, uh, the association Razak to Najib, so many questions. Anything that has any sort of reference to Najib will be cut off. <laughs> Anwar Ibrahim is no stranger to the courts. After enduring a sodomy trial 10 years ago, a conviction later quashed, he's again facing and again proclaiming his innocence to the charge of sodomy. Uh, and I think, uh, firstly, it's a frivolous charge, it's a malicious charge. Uh, it shouldn't be a charge in the first place. This is the man at the centre of the controversy, Saiful Bukhari, and in June he swore on the Quran that he was raped by Anwar. Now, I am um, uh, I'm a practicing Muslim. I don't treat the Quran as a political weapon. 
And you do make f a mockery of religion. The first doctor to examine Saiful Bukhari, Dr. Muhammad Oswan, says there was no evidence of sodomy. Please be assured that I had merely done my job as a doctor. I'm not involved in politics. I will always tell the truth. I've never at any time breached my professional ethics. But you've been through this before and mud sticks. Perhaps there are people out there who would say, well, perhaps it's true. Look, I was beaten to near death, jailed for six years. Uh, so they, I think, came back to this sodomy charge. But uh, not one shred of evidence can be produced. They can create, they can fabricate. Yes, they will do so. But I'm not the least worried. We'll fight them. So who is Saiful Bakari? Najwan Halimi knows him. They were at university together. During his uni days, I mean, as far as I know him, he was, uh, he hates Anwar so much. So Najwan Halimi smelt a rat when he saw Saiful working for Anwar. My perception is that when he, when I saw him the first time he was with Anwar, uh, and when I heard that he was working at Anwar's office, my thinking is that he wanted, he was there to sabotage Anwar. So who did you believe, uh, Saiful or Anwar? Obviously it's Anwar. I mean, uh, Logically, Saifu is uh, much more stronger. I mean, he, he was well built. And Anwar himself was a 61 year old man with a back pain. And he was just, uh, he, he just arrived from Mecca performing his uh, pilgrimage. And it doesn't make sense that he would commit such an, I mean, uh, this uh, offense. And here's Saifu Bukhari in the Deputy Prime Minister's office with Najib Razak's aid. It is in evidence that this man went to see Najib, discussed the issue. He is in the payroll of Najib's staff. He was planted there as one of the volunteers in my small establishment during the height of the electoral campaign. And uh, there was it was all, uh, you know, it, it cannot be serious coincidences. Yes, Saiful came around asking for a scholarship. He, he, he met one of my staff and he took pictures, pictures of, uh, with other ministers. I mean, he was a student looking for support from the government. So what's wrong with that? Does it mean that there is some part of political conspiracy? Because Saiful was, was somebody who was hired by Anwar personally. It's not just Anwar and Najib who know Malaysian politics can be ruthless. Just ask one of the country's most popular politicians. Theresa Koch is free after spending a week in solitary confinement detained under the ISA, the Internal Security Act, for inciting racial and religious conflict. Theresa Koch's won both a state and a federal seat making her a hero to her ethnic Chinese supporters, but the enemy in the eyes of extreme Malays. All this come from the uh, Malays in the ruling parties feeling very unsafe or insecure. I should also say that Selangor is the most uh, advanced state in Malaysia. They never expected that they could have lost Selangor State to the opposition parties and they try to play the kind of uh, racial and uh, religious issue to try to win back the Malay support.